All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for the Ancient, Ancient Magus, Magus Bride, Bride, episode 21. 21. Oh. Chise has a uh, has a hand mm-hmm. that is that is big. Yes, yeah. and she's going to be joining the Witch's Coven. Right. Uh, probably to find out a way in which she can restore herself a mm-hmm. little bit. Uh, but there's but, still the whole things with uh, Cartophilus, Cartophilus out yeah, there. Yeah. So not everything is resolved in mm-hmm. terms of uh, nope. made right. Also, yeah. the whole thing with Stella being like, you know, marked or something. Whatever that means exactly. Whatever that whole thing was about yeah. uh, hasn't come to fruition yet. Mm-hmm. And also Chisei's little flash into Cartophilus's mind through a dream right. in There's the London that. kind of yeah. scape of uh, his whole psyche or what have you. Right. That needs some resolution as well. It does indeed. And we're coming up on the end of the uh, season here. so We are. Uh, yeah. there's, there's not much time. So I'm guessing mm. we're going to be getting into the whole thing with the witches this episode. Sure. But they're going to tease in some level the Cartophilus stuff. Mm. I did see that. But it could also be cool to get into some classic Ancient Magus Bride uh, depth building for the world and another interpretation of magic as a whole. Sure. Because we have the sorcerers, we have the mages, we have the dragons, we have the the elves, we have the fairies. Um, We have some of the old creatures like the, uh, you know, Ashenai character. We have Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, uh, the Christmas Yule Mm, uh, old, that's right. old yep. like mother and father, whatever they were. Right. Uh, so, so yeah, the witches will be interesting. It should could be interesting. Yeah. Without further ado, let's get into this. Oh, Elias' backstory. Yeah. Oh wow. Dang. <laughs> Oh, because they all, the others had some kind of function or role. Right. That's actually a big deal because Elias might not understand the concept of love, but I think he understands the concept of being seen. Because that's something that transcends the emotional, logical... I'm gonna wake up in the coven or something. I think it might be a dream thing. They might go in to uh, some sure. kind of alternate plane, you know? Yeah, I'm I'm getting that vibe. This music is kind of the same thing that they did when they were in the uh you know, in the forest. Yeah. The spirit forest or what have you. Oh my. Young ones. Oh, oh. I didn't catch that. Good, good eyes, Chisei. ありがとうございます。聞いている。ドラゴンを生かしたまま呪いを解く。はい。いや、すまない。It's <laughs> Ah, uh, so Mariel's okay. kind of trying to use them, but not, not really. Trying to give them some hope. Did a tree branch just reach out and touch her? It did. Oh, whoa. Okay. Oh, the tree is getting up to her. Mm-hmm. Her face, yeah. Awesome. Wow. Mm. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, another old person. Never. Turned into a tree. Guess Cartophilus might be their only hope then. Mm -hmm. It's being very respectful. Yeah. Okay. So she whispered something to Elias. Mm -hmm. Mm. What is Elias thinking of? Mm -hmm. Ah, oh. 
Hey, I mean, carp to fill us. Mm. <clears throat> Possibly. Uh, 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 whoa. Okay, what's going on? Getting in some kind of vault of sorcerers. Looking up all the, the ancient knowledge about, you know, stuff like this. Equivalent exchange. <laughs> what are we supposed to gain from this? This seems like he's making some sort of contract or something. Yeah, not exactly sure what's going on, but you can tell it's but something... But Elias looked actively sad. It's weighing heavily on him, whatever it is, yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Hmm. Hey. Simon. <laughs> Good to see you, Simon. Long time to see. Ah, it's like he's feeling a place. You're very intuitive, my friend. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> nice transition. That's almost scary to think about. Right. He's actually driven. Oh no. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh. Please show, don't misdirect yeah. us into thinking yeah. he's going to sacrifice the child for Chise. I, when I it's actually just so. he's being like, good, you're here, now you can go see Chise and make her happy. Right. Huh. Good girl. What <laughs> You know she's not going to uh, take kindly to that. Hold on. Oh. Crap. <clears throat> um. Holy crap. Uh. Whoa. Nevin, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. That's right. That's that's true. Mm. <laughs> it's you doing this. Yes, yes, yes. That's awesome. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Ah, fly strong across the stormy oceans. Yes. Chise. <laughs> Yeah, Cartophilus, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's... Oh, that is... That's messed up. Chise,そいつから離れるんだ。そいつは。Elias. Elias. Whoa. Those eyes! Couldn't Ruth just telepathically fill her in? Stella, after the wake, I get a car. Come on, I could say. I could not have Dog frozen in place. Woman. That's why he's shunny. He's shunny can't guys at the Hoskata. Call Surunara Stella Dato Motta. Kimi was Stella. Okay. Good job. Good job. 
僕は時期に来る君の死を否定する。提供してあげてもいいし、ごまかしてあげる。どうしてくれないなら、わかるよね。ああ、追いつかれちゃうよ。あ追いつかれちゃうよ。どうする私は、今のあなたのそばにはいられない。Whoa. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. We're kicking into high gear now. We're kicking into really high gear. And Chise has made some very big decisions、yes. recently. But this、Indeed. decision is huge. Like, probably her biggest yet. Right. Because like, Elias, overall, throughout、mm -hmm. the series, in summation, has been possessive,、mm -hmm. manipulative. Um, immature,、yep. jealous, but one of the things that in particular kind of kept us going, ah, but this is why they need to show him being all these things is because he needs to develop into someone、right. who's actually worthy of Chise.、Yeah. They both need to grow.、Yep. They both need to grow. And、yeah. all along, Chise has had her flaws that were, you know, very、yep. much apparent as well.、Mm -hmm. But in particular, they didn't seem to have. Uh, as many consequences for Elias's misgivings as they did for、right. Chise. Because Chise seemed to let things slide a lot more than Elias did. Right. And that was one of her flaws in、right. a way. Exactly. Because she didn't put much value on her、mm -hmm. life and,、yep. and、right. as, a, as a whole, really not much in what she can do. But、yep. one of the things that's big about this is Chise has always you know, looked out for, for others in particular.、Mm -hmm. But she liked to always bring it up in the context of I'm being selfish. By trying、yes. to help others in a way.、Right. Which, is, which is funny because、uh, the witch coven leader, priestess、mm -hmm. uh, Phyllis, or she's just like, yeah. this is weird. It was spelled Phyllis, but they called it Pilis or something. Yeah. yeah. Point but being, all, I could, all I could think of was like Phyllis from the office. Yeah, or yeah, something. same. <laughs> but she said, it's better to save yourself first before you save others. And one, I think that's a huge theme throughout this entire show. Is that there are characters constantly trying to do things for others before they've actually、oh, gone and saved themselves? Sure. And yeah, Elias yeah. is trying to save Chise before he's、right. saved himself,、mm -hmm. essentially ignoring the advice of the witch because he you know, thinks it doesn't really apply to him. Exactly. Yeah, youngsters are always like that, right? Yeah. You never listen and, to the old folk. And this, this kind of a thing, in terms of. Where it could be seen as melodrama, like you、mm -hmm. were talking about, like how you don't see this as melodrama. Right. Because this felt earned. Yep. Even though, even though that is something that's like, you know, from the very beginning of the show, you can kind of see something like this coming where there's that falling out, you know,、right. night is dark is just before the dawn thing, because that happens、right. a lot in romance stories. Exactly. But in this, they made it so that you're waiting for that to happen, right? right. Because、yeah. <laughs> that's something that needs to happen, because there's things that need to be resolved and all that、right. stuff. And, So, when it ended up happening, it just it was, it was great. And really, the only thing that you could go and say, like, well, that was kind of、uh, needless melodrama, was the miscommunication or the lack of communication of this is Cartophilus. Would, would, would that have actually、um, changed anything? Well, actually,、and、I would say no. It exactly.、Wouldn't. And that、yep. was the point in、uh -huh. which, when Cartophilus. It was important that they had her、right. know that this was Cartophilus immediately and still turn and back to Elias and be like, You know, I, can't I can't be, be with, with you, you right now. Yeah, when the you're, way when you you're are. Yeah, the way you are now. Yeah, yeah,、mm -hmm. yep.、And、because yeah, because that that would have been that would have been so just ah、uh, no. Right. If they had made it be like, oh, it's Cartophilus, and then suddenly she's like, oh, well, I understand everything now. Yes, it's yeah, it's totally fine what you were about to do, Elias.、Mm -hmm. You know, I understand completely. You know. Yeah, but this yeah. is something that's huge. Cartophilus, in a lot of ways, I think is trying to save himself. Right. Now, we're talking about the whole thing about curses being transferred,、uh -huh. right? Yep. Cartophilus is obviously cursed. Right. Like, this is something that we've seen、yes. multiple points is those dark tentacles essentially coming from、mm -hmm. him、right. or from the people in which he's manipulating or what have、right. you or possessing、mm -hmm. or something. So we know that Cartophilus and Joseph are potentially two separate entities. Right.、Yep. And having.、Uh, Chise go into this position where she could potentially save herself, also might end up saving Joseph from Cartophilus. Or, or however that works. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I,、right. I and, look at this and I go, 
there's almost nothing bad that can come from this. Right. I mean, you know, they could get creative, I'm sure. But Oh, yeah, sure. But, yeah, exactly. And that's, like, okay, one other thing. Did you notice how when she recognized what was going on, mm. she was about to say Carter Phillips, but instead she, she said, said Joseph? Joseph. Yeah. Like, and that was when he's like, oh, you got me. You got me. Like, that was, that was, that was... <laughs> well played, show. Well, well played. played. And, and the idea that, because um, the fact that it's more about Chise's, like, uh, impetus and like decision making and stuff that is what we're really concerned about here right. not so much her safety is great because mm-hmm. in a show like this even with all this stuff of like the dangerous things that can happen to the main character right. we know she's gonna be more or less okay at least until the last episode if they did want to do something where she died or whatever yes. so by making us excited more about the decisions that she's making not oh no is she going to let herself be manipulated by cartophilus or whatever right that's fantastic because that is fantastic conflict we can get more behind yes in particular uh she says moments where she goes and has a has a sense of agency Mm -hmm. advance the story primarily for herself in in a really good way but oftentimes they end up advancing the story for those around her that are maybe yeah. centric to this to the the decision itself. So sure. with Cartophilus being involved here, mm-hmm. um, we're going to get into a little bit more of why he is the way he is. We're going to get mm-hmm. into a Probably. little bit more of maybe what the nature of this curse is sure. in particular. But I think what I, I think if you think about the whole idea of Bearing another's burdens. Now, we're talking, yeah. about, we're talking about curse transference in terms mm-hmm. of the, you know, the magical elements of this show. Right. But if you take it into the real world context, it's basically the idea of forced empathy. Now, here's here's something that I'm, I'm, okay. I want I want to throw into a throw into the pot here of uh-huh. of, of of mixing things. I think that Chise has a lot of empathy, but it's actually like being like kind of locked away behind the trauma of just past stuff okay and there's going to be some like like she's unable to receive empathy and therefore is unable to truly give it as much as as much as she could um sort of one of those things where you have to love yourself in order to love others kind of right um i mean you don't that's not that's not completely empirically restrictive but yes that principle works um I, i think there's something there with her essentially being able to love and or see or empathize with Cartophilus, a.k.a. Joseph, that will save him uh, by sure. bearing yep. his curse right. for and, him uh-huh. and then slay Beggy breaking the rules exactly. in a, in a really cool and, way. And in amazingness. In a way that the show's building up along the themes of things because... Right. I think there's another aspect of this that is letting go. So when you okay, here's 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 where okay. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm I'm doing a really bad job at this. I can I can. I'm sorry that I'm doing this, guys. But I'm trying to draw the connection between empathy and where it can go wrong, and then letting go and where that can go right. Basically, so Chise has not been able to fully let go of some things that uh-huh. are just in her past, right? Sure. People aren't necessarily able to truly empathize with her because I don't think she's capable of truly loving herself because of this stuff. Sure. So it's this weird combination of letting go and embracing empathy. All right. And I feel that being the themes that will carry over into this beyond whatever the magical ramifications are. Sure. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Well, and one of the things that I... Okay, so one of the things that I found really cool about how Cartophilus or Joseph approached Chise Mm -hmm. was the idea that when he made the offer it seemed like a pretty good offer like usually when there's things like this and one of the reasons that it ends up feeling so melodramatic and awful is because it'll be like I'm totally not an evil person and this totally isn't me manipulating you and this totally isn't going to go bad for you but do you want to do this and then they're like sure why not yeah right sounds like a great idea but here I could actually see the entire conflict potentially getting resolved with it just being Chise making a decision, mm-hmm. Elias learning a lesson, and Chise potentially redeeming Cartophilus or Joseph or whichever one it is. Mm-hmm. Um, because if she's giving Cartophilus her curse, it right. will end up allowing him to die. Yeah. He's giving 
her his curse that allows him to live on. Right. And also, what was it? Uh, and then freeing Stella and everything. It's like, this is this seems like just a good for everybody, pretty much, yep. resolution. Yep. I, I could see in a lot of ways he's lying to her and manipulating her. He could be. But yeah. um, but what, like, the, the question is then, what else is he, does he have to gain right. he by has doing not, that? That's one of the things that we've learned about this show, I think, more and more is no one really has anything to gain by killing Chisei. Right. And this is something that I think we've consistently kind of gotten like, oh, oh right, that's that's a theme of this show. But there are people like Cartophilus mm-hmm. who potentially have other things worse than death that they can do to you. Like sure. making he, you into a chimera. Yeah, a sleigh baby chimera. Now, he's probably smart enough to know that's not really going to work because... She's a slight baggy, like, mm. like that seems like the kind of thing where it's like, let's try and force the avatar into the avatar state. Like that's there's well, no way that can go well, wrong. You know? I don't know. I, I I would say if anything, that's no, that's exactly what I would suspect him to do. Oh yeah. But it's the question of would it be a human animal chimera, or would it be a human Cartophilus oh. chimera? Okay, sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Because then he would be giving her the ability to not die. Oh, and he would be taking the curse. Yeah, okay. So so it's a it is actually a great deal except for the fine print of like how I'm going to make this happen. Right. Yeah. So okay. so so she might be getting rid of the curse, but she might be taking a new curse on in exchange for the old one. Uh right. And if it's the curse of not dying, that's not necessarily a bad thing because that's something she needs. But if it's like, "Oh, yeah, by the way, your old body will die and you'll be trapped in here with uh, me, myself, and and Cart Phyllis and Joseph. Well, well, uh, yes, know. but I'm talking about more of the gray area where Cart Phyllis, and this is what we've been theorizing, he might want to die. Mm-hmm. He might be tired. He might Joseph inside Cart Phyllis or whatever might be tired of this curse of just having to walk the earth. Okay. Oh, for immortal, you know, and all that, and. We don't know how long-lived fairies and mages and all that are. It's a little bit nebulous. But mm-hmm. um, if Chise was gifted immortality as a curse, that means right. that there's something else attached to it. And when I saw those little purple tentacles and stuff, I'm like, yeah, all right. Never all trust right. tentacles. That might be the Cartophilus part in particular. Sure. Who's just taken over Joseph's body. Um, and that's wanting to live forever with a slave baggy, slave baggy powers, and or that's whatever. the only reason it will okay. actually leave Joseph potentially. Sure. is I want an upgrade. Okay, okay. It's like I've enjoyed making you into a powerful right. sorcerer and stuff, but I want something that is a little bit tastier. Sure, and there's a ton of ways they could resolve that. I, yeah, I, I feel like they're they're going to have this awesome thing where it's going to be kind of a Mexican standoff, but not really. Where right. There's going to be Cartophilus, Joseph, you know, hoobity ha, whatever. Whatever. Um, and uh, there are probably to be a bunch of nefarious things like what you were talking about. For sure. And then there's going to be Elias, who's going to be like, I'm going to, I'm going to come in and fix this. She says, going to be like, no, I'll, no. <laughs> I'll do this myself. Thank you very much. Right. You know, and then, and then she'll have to do her sleigh bag each well, say awesome yes but we, we go back and look at all the previous kind of cartophilus interactions they mm-hmm. all revolve around curses actually um you know the oh. the whole thing of putting the sure you know the curse in the mm-hmm. island thing in the middle of the lake right um making know, the chimeras making and the chimeras the dragon and dragon yeah okay uh so i think what Cartophilus has been trying to do is make something worthy to transfer his curse into. Okay. And sure. nothing has succeeded. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And in particular, he's been going after magical creatures that, mm-hmm. you know, could may- maybe fulfill that. And Chise is just the ultimate magical creature as right. far as things go. Yeah. So I don't think that he necessarily needs to make her into a chimera or anything, mm-hmm. but I think he needs to make her choose this because that's that's where you're talking gotcha. about. It's not yeah. that she needs to be forced into the avatar state, right? Because so to speak. there's n- that's just not going to work. Well, no, but I think that Chise has just enough frailty in terms of her, you know, mental and emotional stability that, that she could be manipulated. Could be manipulated but yeah. Now, where she's at as a character, yeah, I could see it being a very 
very difficult thing actually to manipulate her. In fact, I think she's a little bit kind of irritant to the, she has an almost an irritant to that whole side of things now. So if anything, she might make another deal. Like I, I could see this being a thing sure. where he, they're like, he pushes here's the, the deal. Her way yeah. And she's like, mm, and then she changes some things and some sends revisions. it back. And he's like, he's like, I can live with that. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he might have to just accept it. He's like, yeah, this is this is within acceptable boundaries of right. deviance. Yeah, right. I, I'm I'm just curious to see what <laughs> that whole side of things with Cartophilus's deal, in combination with going in depth into his character, because we have little hints of things. Right, but, but I think we're about to get context. Sure, because so far it's been largely like speculation based on foreshadowing type stuff. Right, right. Yeah. And there's been lots of them. There's lots of little bits mm-hmm. here and there. But primarily it's been uh, it's been vague, intentionally. So that an episode like this will probably hit harder. So they'll actually have a part where they'll actually go through Chi Chi say reading all the terms of the contract and being like, This is what I'm no, trying to do. No, da, 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 da. no I, <laughs> I, I really doubt that. Um But but here's the thing that's really good here. You know who else was in on this deal with Elias? Ruth. That's true. Ruth in particular is someone that we haven't actually got the character development yeah. on we've gotten the character depth for mm-hmm. him absolutely and that's good that's good but up until now he's just been best doggo you know just good good doggy yeah who's, who's the goodest me? boy who's the, the goodest boy the goodest boy just approved of this whole thing i mean he did seem to be we were worried like... for a second that they were going to sacrifice ruth yeah but instead no it had to be a human being right it had to be someone that no he did you know, seem he did seem a little bit opposed to it but yeah, no, uh, or at I, least questioning of it. Like, I don't think so. Elias, uh, what what are we doing exactly? You know, I think Elias basically convinced him, but it didn't take right. much. Sure, I think it was like this is the best way to do this, and this will save her. What do you say? He didn't say like you have to do this or I'll right, right. kill you. It's uh-huh. more of like, do you agree? And he's like, yeah, I would choose Chise every single time, and I I like that that's in line with his character, mm-hmm. but. Ruth, but as it, a whole, with Elias, will need to realize that they don't know what's best for Chise. Sure. And that's something that I think is, is important as a, as a character in any story. You generally don't know what's best for someone else. They know what's sure. best for them. And yet, one of the reasons why that plot line keeps getting brought up is because there's generally a kind of parental to child role mm-hmm. involved, and right. I would say for most parents, when they're you know, uh, when there's when yeah. the kids are really young, of they, course they know what's they best know for the parents. Yeah, yeah. But but there comes says, that point where it shifts. She says not a child necessarily exactly, anymore. and you're not wanting a parental relationship. Mm-hmm. So yep. there's that. One other yep. thing I gotta say. Okay, that part where Silky's there. And she's oh. crying, and they don't even show her face. They don't show and her face. I'm, yeah. I'm both really glad that they did, and kind of wish that they had. But right. it, but at the same time, I know that that just would have been too much to see. Yeah. see your face right there, because it's like this is the home that she's watching over, and and the home is the home is being used for things she does not approve. Yeah, of. yeah, the home is breaking. There's there's some there's some not not good things going on, and Silky just wants everyone to be happy and yeah, just to stay yeah. together here, and just to. Be together forever. I know. You know, it's actually in a funny way. Uh Silky kind of hints at that. Is the idea of them spending eternity together in the house? That's the happy ending. Yeah. The happy ending is that yes, Chise unfortunately receives the idea of a cursed like. Right. to fill but immortal hey, body. Curses are what you make of them, you know? Yep. Blessing curse. Yep, yeah. they've said that in the show. Yep. So, oh, shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shoot. So we've yeah. been building up to she's a having this transformation mm-hmm. and she's had many transformations some literal physical yep. some mental some emotional mm-hmm. all of the above but yeah. she says final transformation is going to be one i think of acceptance of finally sure. truly accepting yep. herself yep accepting her situation and moving forward so acceptance has to happen become right. before moving forward. Yeah, acceptance, acknowledgement, and all that stuff. Where, mm-hmm. yes, this is this is who I am, and and, everything. and maybe yeah. also this is what I want because maybe Chise right. hasn't re- she has said that 
multiple times. Uh-huh. But maybe she needs to reaffirm it after an event like this. Yeah, and say, and not, and not just to know what she wants, but to say, what I want is worth going after. You know, like like really or just going this after. is what I'm going after. Uh, sure. Yeah. yeah. She can just decide to go for it. Actually, right. it's kind of funny because the way we, the way I way I think about this, it more and more makes me think of like. Like kind of we're we're all talking about contracts and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like there's there's been this there's been this thought in the back of my yeah, head ever know, since I the know. beginning of this show that this show is called the Ancient Magus Bride, right? Uh huh. Well, like they've never gotten like engaged or like married or anything like that. So how is she the Ancient Magus Bride? And I, I keep waiting for the. Ah, now you are the ancient Magus Bride. Roll credits, like, like if we get into the whole idea of her, you know, acceptance okay, gotcha. and realizing we could be seeing like a really happy ending if it's like, uh, like yeah, I mean, like a classic hey, like they them committing to each other, not like an actual like wedding or anything like that, but them actually like, I give my mm-hmm. life to you. Hey, I give my life hey, to you as well. There's three episodes left. There's they don't plenty have of to time. spend them That's all true. on Cartophil. They don't. And Joseph. They don't. They could spend one or maybe two, and <laughs> then have like a full episode or an episode and a half. That's all just their resolution. Yeah. In fact, like, actually, I, I was jo- I was joking kind of about the wedding thing, but now they think about it. There's been so many characters introduced. Can you imagine them doing a time skip and like? Showing like everyone there because they yeah, had yeah. so many characters yeah. brought into this show that I forgot about Ariel, the the fairy creature's name. Ashenized, you know? like, can I do the can I do the <laughs> thing? And like, no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we already have a priest. Thank you very much. Yes, that's yeah. true. Simon the priest. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, it yep. works perfectly. And okay. then Ruth can bring the rings. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Well, gosh. it could also be Silky. They can bring the rings together. Yeah. Or no, no. Ruth they can brings, walk down the no, aisle together. No. Silky's the, the flower girl, and Ruth brings the rings. Right, but what would be cool is if they did do this, like, make it not a kind of stereotypical kind of Western look of a sure yeah have their own have their like own that. way of doing it now oh, very very no. different traditions okay and stuff. okay now this is something that I just want to say adjoining if you will and it is completely silly ooh, it is ooh, I love I love silly stuff it's not going to happen but if we end up having this sort of Mexican standoff thing you know uh, awesome right. discussion type deal mm-hmm. over the deal yeah now I don't think I don't think Silky can actually leave the house <laughs> but. <laughs> Have her come in with but like her could, banshee vengeance with 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 her sledgehammer, and she just puts a hand on Elias's shoulder and she just shakes her head, you know, like and then you know to be like she's got this, don't worry. But just in case, I've got my sledgehammer. <laughs> but she know. doesn't speak though. Exactly. Yeah, I know. But it's all communicated just through just through like just through physical looks. expressions and looks and stuff. Yeah. No. Yep. What do you think, long shot? Hmm. I respect, I respect that. that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love characters like that who communicate through body language yes. and through like mm-hmm. just you know facial features. Yeah, and stuff. I feel that like that's something good. where a lot of characters, like a lot of times, stories will rely on dialogue, and and even if the dialogue's really good, but because of that, they will ignore those things that make characters feel so much more like real people kind of right. like what like studio ghibli movies do sure where they'll have those little you know those little movements and expressions that i think ancient magus bride does that very well it understands yeah, the lingering yeah. moments mm-hmm. and the like they have the, to the idea to have elias doesn't have facial expressions. Well, well that too but also just the uh just utilizing a scene like a scenery, mm. like scenery yes. or a background yes. to add oh, metadata yeah. to what yep. characters are thinking. They, they have knocked that out of the park consistently. Yeah. In fact, I, I could almost see Ancient Magus Bride being worthy of some serious, like, hardcore going back through and analyzing it because I'd say on a frame by frame basis, this show has a lot it's going pretty on. Pretty amazing. But but the thing is, it's not it's not communicated perfectly on a frequent basis right it's not it's not necessarily like your attention isn't drawn to it a ton so that you could just let it wash over you and miss some of the nuance of it maybe right because it's your first time watching or something for sure yeah um i think we're we're running in circles here but the the last thing i i want to bring up is the london scene that we saw a couple episodes back where Mm. she met 
Joseph right. for the first time. He was crying. Yes. And this is something that in particular you and I had a little bit of a funny talk about. You were like, just burn him because he, he had just, you know, uh, you right. know, made the abomination with the dragon. Yes. Now, are you ready to empathize with well, Joseph? See, no, I can have my cake and eat it because there's two of them. There's Joseph and there's Cartophilus. I know, but you are, you ready, one, are you ready? Are you empathize? Are with you the other? ready to empathize with him? I'm ready to empathize. Because I'm ready. I'm, emp- I'm, I'm ready. ready to empathize with the crying one, right? The the Sly Smiles and Tabby Stabby, you know, that guy can still burn. Okay. All right. So. I'm just, I'm just excited for so. the Ancient Magus Bride version of events where it Marriage. doesn't go... Well, no, it, just, it doesn't go the way either of us expected. Sure. Because one of the things that, with this show is that very specific things are predictable. Like, very predictable. Yeah. But... Other things aren't because we're yeah. in a world that doesn't line up with our real world. There are uh, so many things right. going on on the magical side of bits. Yeah. So the side of it that specifically with regards to the characters, yes. a lot of the characters just don't think the way we would expect them to yep. for traditional fantasy, hoo-ha, or whatever. Right. This is very yeah. high fantasy. Right. Like, uh, the, the, the old, magical beings being sort of beyond understanding kind right. of stuff. So. Old, old, old myth. Uh, right. Yep. Related fantasy. Yep. Yep. So I, I love it, but I'm I'm ready to uh, I'm ready to empathize <laughs> with I'm, with uh, the hated cat killer. I'm ready to see that that determined look in Chise's eyes that we oh, saw from like the that. openings and stuff. Well, yeah, that that. But that's the part with the Ruth scene in particular. That's true. So it's not something we're gonna see again necessarily. But, but, but we did see a like determined a, scene in this mm-hmm. one we did. where she looked at Elias and yeah. it was just dead eyes. Yeah, like. Ugh. Like, if looks could kill. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Like if Elias she, would have been a pile of ash If she ash accidentally, on the floor. like, gave him a sleeping spell or whatever, <laughs> you know, just by trying to help him, like, singing a lullaby, <laughs> Elias was... We lucky. would have to go Elias to the witch's coven. cucky right there. Right, we would have to go to the witch's coven to fix a whole different type of curse right there. <laughs> All right, guys. This is a great episode. Uh, if you want to watch the next episode's reaction right now, go check yeah. out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get an early access there. You can watch full-length reactions. All this comes with Discord access, so you can chat with us. You can get involved in some of the events that are going to be happening in yeah, there. It's going to be yeah. pretty cool. And yeah, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. time.